Welcome back to Night Mind, friends. Thanks for joining me in the office again this evening on a lovely summer night. You know, there's something pretty special in our neck of the woods about summer nights. They just seem to fit us better than other time periods. There's a whole lot of internet horror history related to those times when school's out of session or just gotten back into rotation. Marble Hornets, of course, began June 20th of 2009, and it seemed that in the changeover from the 2000s to the 10s, everything creepypasta bubbled up in popularity, spread, and obsession once summer arrived. I'm sure a lot of you remember how it felt, don't you? Late nights with cheap laptops, air conditioners or fans going, diving into things online too haunted or scary to be caught looking at, Schlocky stories made by amateurs, obviously fake, nowhere near cinematic or literary potency, and yet, enchanting, enticing, dark hallways in the web that begged you to keep walking down, all the while telling yourself, there's nothing at the end of this, but the desire to prove yourself wrong still existed, the wish to know more, anything more. That was a special time online, and tonight, I want to introduce you to Chainmail Chasers, a channel that serves as a wonderfully dedicated love letter to how it looked, felt, and engaged with the internet. But before we begin, it's obvious that we need to be careful. This part of the internet can get rough, so it's time for a crucial word about online safety from the sponsor of tonight's investigation, our old friends at Surfshark. As the only VPN to reach coverage of 100 countries, I'm fairly certain that by now, you know Surfshark's name and reputation providing secure internet access and privacy all over the world. And when you're diving into the old web where haunted websites hide the remnants of horrors beyond the ken of man, it's good to know you're protected. And that nobody will ever discover what kind of otherworldly secrets you've uncovered, thanks to their strict no-logs policy. Just one subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on unlimited devices. You can count on Surfshark through PC, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, your game consoles, even your smart TVs. And with all the ways that Surfshark lets you bypass the restrictions for viewing place on people by country and hides your identity and activity, it's a great companion for diving into the more paranormal depths of the online world. And if you're not into doing that yourself, CleanWeb automatically blocks more than 1 million known malicious websites, phishing methods, and other threats, keeping you from becoming the main character in your own horror and fiction adventure. And if you ever need assistance, they have 24-7 live customer support to ensure that your issues will be solved in a prompt, timely manner because they know internet horrors don't like to wait around. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash nightmind and use code nightmind to get 83% off a two-year plan and three extra months for free. Again, just go to surfshark.deals forward slash nightmind and use code nightmind to get 83% off a two-year plan and three extra months for free. Thanks to Surfshark for offering protection to nightmind viewers once again. Now, with our guards firmly up, let's go chase some chain mail, shall we? I've got an entry to the Nightmind Index to thank for my notice of Chainmail Chasers, and I am truly grateful for it. This one has stuck with me ever since I opened the email, and after getting the moment I needed to check out the project, I knew I had to bring this to a video. On May 25th, 2022, the operator of Chainmail Chasers uploaded her first video, Slenderman, Creepypasta Image Origins. She wanted to explore the origins of various creepypasta and horror images from the early internet, all in a classic Windows Movie Maker-esque format, to pay proper tribute to the era. And immediately, I'd say she succeeded. All of the videos pertaining to origin explorations are like this. Deliciously dated, soaked in free horror music you've all heard at some point a decade ago or more, 
presented in 4-3 aspect ratio and low frame rates with image degradation. From Slenderman to Jeff the Killer and Smile Dog, it's positively dripping with nostalgia and faithfully executed, including accidental capture of desktop elements from the maker's computer. There are even visits to the Creepypasta wiki, which I'm sure a lot of you spent time on. But, and this truly is where it shines, it's not just a love letter. It never is just what it seems when we're taking a look at something, is it? This one has a story. And if anybody ever came to me asking about the viability of trying an unfiction project today using the old creepypasta material, I'd be pretty concerned for their prospects and approach. But chainmail chasers? <laughs> well, let's just say there's always a way when there's a will. Now, of course, I am going to go through the series with you. But as always, I implore you and encourage you to please check it out for yourself. I have a playlist link in the video description below. You can watch this whole thing for yourself. And as always, you don't get the same experience if you just watch me instead of the content. And this is a fun one. A lot of heart and a lot of love and a lot of talent went into this. You want to experience the surprises yourself first. Once you're done, return to me here and we'll continue on with the history of Smile Dog. All set? Excellent. Now, the history of Smile Dog, like many of these internet urban legends, is out there, but in Chainmail Chaser's approach, they seem to find out more. Here, have a look. So, I put that, uh, like this is just an update, I put that one website into the Wayback Machine. And I got this. This thing is fucking old. And, uh, you click Anomalies. Boosh. You got all this shit. And then you click Chain Letters. And then you go up here. And then you have all these different chain letters you can look into. And you click on smile. And then smile takes you here. And this is interesting. Because it had it a smile god loves you a uh, smile is an old chain letter that features an image of a dog grinning he he that threatens the receiver with nightmares and death if they do not spread the email and then you got like this old ass fucking email from james hitch or hidworth i can't tell because it's so compressed but anyway the email is kind of a bad example because it is actually a friendly email Telling you to look at the fucking image. So, kind of a shit example for the nightmares and death part, but... There are many variants of the letter itself, with the earliest being from the early 90s on Usenet. Like, I did not expect that there would be... Old... Older traces of this creepypasta. Like, I figured that... If, if there's something like this, then someone else would have found it by now. So, in the attempt to discover more about creepypasta images than may have already been explored, our channel operator actually appears to have succeeded. Interesting little turn of events, especially for such a find as something only accessible via the Wayback Machine. But wait, there's an update video immediately following, with the channel runner claiming she received a lead or two in her email and quite a few duplicate emails from somebody she perceived to be antagonizing her over the Smile Dog legend. But one email was from a legitimate person, offering the image from the monitor seen on paranormal prickheads. This, in turn, led to a source attached, a thread on something awful, the same place Slenderman first appeared online. 
The Wayback Machine had a page for this too. We're back on the screen recording again. Um, as you saw with those emails, there was one legitimate person which was just interested in the video and wanted to help, I guess. And then there were like a billion fucking spam emails from the same guy, I, I assume, anyway. And even though those spam emails sucked shit, they did have the full image file for this. I think in the original pasta, I, I did go back and skim through it after last episode. It did mention that there was a something awful thread or maybe just like the site in general where <laughs> it says a hacker did it, but I think I think it's just like a shitty spammer seeing this thread, but they just spammed the smile dog picture everywhere. And I don't... I, I guess the thread's real. It's on Wayback Machine. I don't fucking know. But... And then when you get to 10, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 fucking posts in a minute. And... Yeah, Googly Moogly's up there. Is there anyone else? That's, uh... That's another one. I mean, it's it's clearly, like, from, from the same thing as this, but, like... I mean... Huh. Well, um... Intriguing, isn't it? A thread from a form that seems to depict the kind of obsessive sharing activity common for a chainmail horror like Smile Dog. It can't be left unstudied, which leads us into the next video, Smile Dog Origins, Questions. It begins with presentation of the email that led to the new Smile Dog image, or one of its originals, written by Arthur Murphy. This prompted a Discord call between the two. It's, uh... So faithful to a call between two terminally online people with clear social dysfunction once you get them on a microphone that it's almost as painful as it is wonderfully executed. So I'm just going to compile the highlights, okay? I mean, okay, but I thought you were going to just show me... Like, if, the way, okay. if you leave this call thinking that I am fucking with you, you have every right on earth to never talk to me again, okay? I mean, I, I did before too, but... <laughs> Okay, fuck, just go on to uh, screen share your browser, that's alright. I mean, okay, um, bloop. Like, right before it goes to black, like, just a tiny bit. And a turn on, turn on, like, the lower thing that slows down the video, fuck, I forgot the name. The yeah. Speed? Mm hmm What the fuck? Uh, uh perfect, that's alright, uh... Okay, wait one second, then pause it again. Pause. Yeah. You see that? In the corner? Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of fucking weird. Um. Hmm? Looks kind of like mold or whatever, but... What I, yeah, that must. What I think happened here is you can see that it's in line with the the image or whatever, and above it you have like all the other small ones, and this kind of looks like. You think so? I want to say it kind of looks like like curtains or something. I can't remember if that mm. one above one had curtains, but. Actually, wait, wait, no, this is similar to the above image. Hmm? So, yeah, no, the above image didn't have curtains, so. 
Oh. I, I don't know what that is then. Um, actually, okay, wait. Can you actually um turn off the screen share real fast? Can you know the smile dog um image? Like you downloaded it? Yeah, I, I yeah. Can you open it up a few times? Like, like you want me to screen share it or? No, no. Can you just yeah, just open it up a few times on your own? The fucking okay, like. Hey, so um. I was told that I should open the image multiple times. I don't understand why. Uh, what the fuck? I'm I'm not talking to a JPEG. I. I okay. What what the fuck? Oh my god. So, just tell me how. Did you, um, how the fuck I know I was thinking? I, I, Oh hell no. Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> And this, this is one of the major reasons I felt compelled to share this with you all. That sequence was presented with handheld camera footage by the channel operator and a simultaneous screen capture. We're given two different ways to witness the event, making it even more convincing in how it played out. And I'll be honest, I don't know how she managed to pull that off. That was a delightful show of homebrew screen magic, thoroughly effective in presenting a cursed image like this coming to life. And the way it was done, clicking on and clicking off, changing the file name, all seeming to be one continuous run, and now suddenly it's off and acting on its own. Magnificent. Beautiful work.
I've never seen somebody present something like this, and I've never seen someone give viral scary images this much potency, and in such a way that you're left wondering how they achieved it. So in terms of world build, this entity made it clear that it's not the source of whatever curse it's part of, it's just a vector, and it transmits through neurons, digital and the flesh. It also doesn't know much more than it's sharing. This really plays out like a realized version of what you might read in a creepypasta. Some young college-age kid messing around with scary images or having come across one at random, and suddenly it leads them into a full-blown encounter with a digital horror that's doing the impossible. We're not just reading about it this time, we're seeing it from two different perspectives at once. This is what it means to take old outdated material or trends and do something new with them while playing it faithfully. Where do we go from here though? Odd as it seems, a new direction of business as usual. Hey Chainmail Chasers, Davey here, welcome back to the channel. And yeah, I'm a new guy, so don't be alarmed. My friend's been having some computer issues lately, so I'm helping out. Uh, with introductions out of the way, let's do one last thing before we get into the video. Only 29% of our viewers are subscribed. It's crazy. So, if you want to give me a welcome to the neighborhood gift, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Anyway. Yes, the Chainmail Chasers operator is too spooked and occupied now with the haunting to pick up making regular videos. So now we have her friend Davey, with a hilarious old shame the viewer tactic to scratch up subscriptions that used to be really prevalent across channels. Hey, by the way, did you know that only 55.1% of you watching are subscribed to Nightmind? Are you going to keep depriving yourself of new Nightmind episodes whenever they appear? Anyway, Davey goes over the origins of the Rake, another popular creepypasta monster, which longtime viewers will remember was featured prominently in Everyman Hybrid and the series Whispered Faith. It's actually just a normal video, goes along with what we've seen so far. Davey also has a flair and knack for this that shows more experience in the video editor than his friend who began Chainmail Chasers, and yet, it still feels nostalgic in its presentation. But this leads us right into the video, Smile Dog Origins, Frustration. A conversation between the channel runner, Davey, and Arthur Murphy, who appears to still be around, even after tricking Chainmail Chasers into an obvious curse. I just wanted to show you why I've been so frustrated these, these past few days. Like, I don't know if you're just trying to mess with me. I, I know that's that's not really your deal, but I just... Yeah, what the fuck? Who are you talking to? A fucking Davey. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Is this about the... Because I don't know what this has to do with the video. Okay, I don't even... I don't even know if, like, anyone saw it. I don't know how. Some of it's pretty obvious. But... The... Uh... What? Right there. You, you, the the, the visual glitches. The visual glitches on on the computer. It it was in it was in the video. I yes. Yeah, so. You edited it in. No, no, I didn't. I. Mm. Why would you even assume that I did that? There's like I, I don't know because maybe you just have a shitty program. I don't know. Well, Why maybe like YouTube this? fucked it up. It's, this is the know. this is the raw download. Like this this is as it, as it was saved. You just got a fucking computer virus. Why? Why? I'm, okay, I'm, no, okay, I'm, that's I'm stupid. To... Are you uh, right using a virtual machine? No. Why? No. Huh? Oh. Well, just hold on. Let me. Uh, let me. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another one. Here's another one. Hold on. I'll just. I'll, yeah. No. I'll just screen cap it right now. Yeah. You. You see. You see. That no, is. I, that I is. See. That is a dog. Okay. Yeah. I don't. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. Just ignore the rake. You got okay. an eye here. You got like colored fur. I don't see shit. <laughs> Uh, I, there's something there, but I don't. Here, outline it, it for me. Isn't isn't that just like the crossfade into whatever's next? Oh, you you want to you want to see what's next, huh? You want to see what's before and after? That's cool. the, there's that, and then where is the eye? Where is the eye on that? Where is the the teeth that you're going down? I don't oh. know what to tell you. 
Oh, but oh, we're, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. There's still more. There's three of these fucking things. Okay? Uh, okay. Like, look, look, look. <sighs> okay, this one is. Okay, what the... Yeah, yeah. What, you what you see. Like... I, I, I see, I see that. Is that a face? Yup. You can see the cheek, you can see the nose. Fuck. I think that's the chin. You can see the fucking neck muscles, even. What the fuck? Wait, so... That was from the video, like, Darken or whatever? Yes, yes. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just straight up play the clip. I'll just straight up play the clip. It, Please you do. You don't have the full context, but whatever. Their investigation in. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no. Davy's voice is just muffled that whole time, like for for a solid like three seconds. Ah, uh, you know, coincidences happen. You you know how fucking stupid that is, right? I okay, yeah, I know. Listen, fuck, I don't know. Uh, okay, and here, here, yeah. Look, this is what I was talking about. This is what I was talking about. There's more stuff here. Like you got like a broken. Is that is that like a Google logo or open original disc? I don't know. But look, you have you have text down here. That's not like this is clearly the rake. I don't know what. May 31st, 2020 something. Like, what does that mean? What is that supposed to tell me? <laughs> the the future? No, okay, Do you not look, understand my concern I... here? No, no, no. You, no, saw, you saw the video. You no, saw the last video I mean, where no. it was waking me up to laugh at me. Listen. I believe you. I don't want to be that guy in the horror movie who doesn't believe the person who's obviously fuck shit is happening. Yeah, I know you're okay. You wouldn't miss me like this, right? I can trust you on that. I, so, I'm more likely to okay, mislead then, you then by. I'm more likely to mislead you by just sheer delusion than anything. Okay, well, uh, if this is delusion and it's a shared one, so I guess we're on the same page. Yeah, no, like fucking true that. Like evidence is right there. This is well, I do think that there. No, I know that there is something going on here. Like I, okay. I've had like I've put up with similar bullshit as you, like in the past. But it's, you know, do you know what it is. Do you know what to do with it. That's a loaded question. Uh, How is it loaded? Mm, look, look. You brought up. Like a virtual machine earlier. Yeah. Yeah, you could just do that. <laughs> would I, I guess. just would I literally just be able to put the picture of the dog inside there? Cause as far as I'm yep. concerned, if I delete that, I don't even know the moral implication of that, first of all. And secondly, whatever this is, is something that kind of needs to be exposed for what it is. I, it, it, I don't it, know. If I was them, I'd be pretty pissed off. Yeah, no. That's what I'm saying. And this thing... is probably listening right now and is probably shaking in anger at you I, for saying that, I, I bet. Mean, can we not invoke the fucking demon right now? Hello! Please. I cannot believe Please. we're discussing the moral implications of deleting a JPEG. Well, it's, I'm not sure if it's a JPEG. You know, I mean, technically, right now it's a GIF. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, man, I kind of want to provoke it, but okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm cutting the fuck why. Off. I'm... What have we learned from this video? It seems as if the upload was corrupted from the channel runner side. Arthur Murphy also claims to have dealt with some similar paranormal circumstances in the past. Business as usual is simply not going to occur until Smile Dog is dealt with or whatever is communicating through it. The next video, Mario, may seem like more of Davy's attempt to keep the wheels turning on chainmail chasers, but its elements factor into a larger picture. Until he beats Iggy's castle. After that, you receive a brutal description of a murder scene, which is as follows. Victim number one. Eyeballs were unable to be found. The victim was found lying on her carpet. 
causes of death unknown, hand marks with unidentifiable fingerprints, were found all over the corpse. That by itself is a good hook, but the pasta is mostly famous for something even more memorable. A high-ranking member of the forum that the hack was posted to tried turning a text file that came with the ROM into an image. This originally failed due to image corruption, but they searched the resolution on Google and found this iconic image, which matched the uncorrupted top portion of the Mario image, and still freaks me the hell out. You know, people put two and two together and assumed that this was supposed to be victim number one. Despite this creepypasta being extremely popular, the source of this image continuously just flew under the radar. Davey talks a bit about potential origins that don't pan out, then introduces a discovery through the use of Tenai, a YouTube mirror site with an upload by Ice Cream Monkey Fan, Weird Chain Letter Victim 1. And this is even more aesthetically in line with old YouTube than the Chainmail Chasers videos we've seen. The uploader claims to receive strange emails from a guy called Grinfiend, the latest of which read as follows. Find me. Now that you've started reading this message, it's too late. This image will haunt your dreams. Each time someone doesn't spread the word to five friends and smile, the picture of their corpse becomes the new curse. It then shows victim number one, the image from Mario, with the same description. The uploader then shows us pictures from the other emails, and they look quite familiar. The connection is obvious. The images from this old chainmail telling people to forward it to five friends and smile is related to the smile dog haunting on Chainmail Chaser's computer. Considering the smile dog that kicked off all of this was on a forum thread that largely did the same, and that appeared in a flood of smile spam mail, it's fairly obvious that it's related, and this thing has certainly been around for a bit. Speaking of our original Chainmail Chaser, she provides an update next, Smile Dog Origins Interrogation. As you know, interrogating the digital horror always goes well for the interrogator, right? I'm going to speak on this video a touch before I show it. This upload is another fantastic achievement. However, trying to understand what the smile dog is saying is like trying to hear sentences in the sound of a garbage disposal. Thankfully, there's a written transcript for the closed captioning, and it's through this we not only know what's being said, but finally get the name of our channel runner, Grace. I'm providing you with a closed captioning version for everybody's sake. And my goal here is to try and ask the thing some questions. I mean, I, I figured I have to have some sort of leverage over it because it's a fucking demon. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll do it, like, you're ruining my fucking life. I'll just cut straight to the point so we can both get this over with. Is there any way I can get you out of my head? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Stop! Stop! Okay. You are not twisting the only person who knows something about you as a bad thing. And why would I trust you over an actual normal person? You're a fucking dog. Picture. You just you just turn on my fucking TV. Where where? What is that? Oh, 
Obvious commentary is expected, I know. This is more fantastic display of digital magic, and I'm all about it. Highly clever, surprising, and inventive in its changes. It's also alluded to that Arthur Murphy is lying about his reason for being around. Uh, yeah, obviously. And the curse isn't done with him either. Yeah, obviously. I wonder, does he need five other people afflicted in order to escape it? And why can't Grace see that? I thought it would be fairly obvious from the whole setup. Arthur knew exactly what Grace needed to do in order to activate the image. Davy appears next with an update on Jeff the Killer, which isn't as random as it may appear. If you've seen our most recent video, this image was shown towards the end. You can probably see that these two are nothing alike other than both being forward-facing grinning monsters. So this led to that, but how? What is the connection? Well, we start by reverse image searching the face, leading us back to an old friend, Paranormal Prickheads. If you're new to the channel, an internet archive page of Paranormal Prickheads is what led to us finding the earlier Smile.jpg images. It may be worth trying a full exploration of the website in the future, as it seems to be mostly archived and boasts a repository of many forgotten old internet horrors. The page seems to be of slightly higher quality and content than the previous Smile Dog page, about a rumor of something called a Solar Plexus Clown Glider. As it turns out, despite never hearing of this before, it is documented elsewhere on the internet. Now the Prickheads page claims that the initial image was actually taken from a variant of the Smile Chain Letters, and was edited or switched out over time on the website meant to spread a rumor about the image's cognitohazardous effects. There are multiple images used, as seen on the page, though some of these images failed to load. This included the last image update on the website. This image is claimed to be stolen and used in a series of images called Pretty Face, which is thankfully cross-linked and archived. Ooh, anybody else's skin crawling a little? It's very obvious Davey didn't catch that. This is on the YouTube side of things, and we don't know what that was. It's pretty clearly going to be important though, and appeared in the missing box for ChakraWorm3.gif. A missing link between the ChakraWorm image and the Clown Glider. What was ChakraWorm in the first place? By the way, as I'm just catching some of the language behind the tale of the Solar Plexus Clown Gliders as we go along, I'm reminded of something. A whole lot of you ought to be so, so glad you got online after the age of screamers. You know the jump scares in Five Nights at Freddy's? Take those, make the pop-up something like you see in these videos, and put it in the context of having no preparation for the incoming animatronic kill. Open an email, get around to reading something intently through the link inside it, or studying a peaceful image like you're playing I Spy, and then wham! Jump scare! Blown right out of your seat by a ghostly face and screaming audio. Thus the term, Screamer. It screams, you scream, normal heartbeat to emergency pulse in a flash. It wasn't a fun time on the internet to be a horror fan. The scares had no art to them, no pizzazz, no build-up. They were all just jump scare garbage from bad 2000s movies taken online. Seriously, you don't even know how good you have it nowadays. Ask the millennials in the comment section, they'll tell you what an atrocious time it was. Now, back to Davy's discoveries. Now, Pretty Face actually corresponds to Pretty Face, one of the early file names of Jeff the Killer, as posted on the old Japanese web. So that got us thinking. The image didn't load, but the file name could still be grabbed. Assuming it was ripped straight from an image board, we did a Google search for the file name, coming across an old 4chan archive, and lo and behold, it contains the corrupted image. None of the other website results that are still online seem to have the image still working, so until someone from one of these old paranormal community sites reaches out, the corrupted image is likely as good as we'll get. 
Clearly some more modifications of the image were made between this and Jeff. The eyes are different and were likely re-added from a higher quality source later on. The mouth, especially the upper lip, also seems to differ heavily. The source of the original face still hasn't been found, but this is still a major find. Doubly so, actually, considering the origins of a previously completely unrelated legend also being found. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching. And one more thing. The next episode will cover a working timeline of the Smile.jpg image over the years, as best as we can approximate from the given information, accompanied by some theories about what exactly is going on. Hmm. It's clear enough that Smiledog wanted Grace and Davy to make the connection, and now we've got more of an idea that all these images and some of these legends may not be one single mutating concept, but several branching mutations. This is explored heavily in the next video. We start with our earliest discoveries back in the first two Smile Dog Origins videos. It is unknown which, if any of these images came first, or if they're all simply variants of the same image. The image entity can take the form of all three very readily, and they all share the same background. To jog your memory, the first is the one found on the Something Awful thread, the second is the one sent through the spam emails, and the last was part of a purposeful scare of the channel researcher. These can be reasoned to be the earliest images we have so far very simply. The Paranormal Prickheads page for the Smile Chain Letter says they've been going around since the early 90s, and the image on the CRT at the bottom is clearly one of these two images. Davy continues on in this fashion, creating a board to track the mutations of the Smile Dog images over the years. But we have some extra activity occurring. No, I know. There's no reason to trust what it says, really. But yeah, yeah, like. But you you've experienced this before, right? So you should know a thing or two about what I'm dealing with, and. I, uh, so, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Oh god, we have an Amaro. I doubt they even Okay, are. but, but that doesn't really matter. Like, I'm saying that I think you should probably have an idea of what this is. Oh. Oh, fuck. Hey, hey, I, I, I can't... ...claimed it was popular going into the millennium, meaning it's from just before 2000, but distinctly following the original image taken from the smile letter. However, we're not done here. With the introduction of this image into the timeline, it allows us to explain our key theory of how this works, and why a timeline with so many images can happen at all. This hypothesis has even more credence when you compare the images. We've now seen Grace officially, and while we can't be sure whether that was Smile Dog playing with us, or if it actually manifested something physically, that clear shot of the closet in the background had you going a little, didn't it? A lovely sequence of slowly ratcheting tension. Very creepy pasta. <laughs> As for the next bit like this, we're going to need the subtitles again. Till effect is present on this one at all. I don't fucking care. 
we're starting to get into the modern era now. Where I'll admit, I had no idea you could do that to YouTube subtitles, but that was cool. The transcript reveals it was Arthur that Grace first was talking to in this video, and the smile dog is teasing her once again about her reliance on him, as well as the lack of information they have. This video ends in an out-of-story credits and declaration that season 1 is complete, which means we're right on time for more. There are a few more videos, not of much consequence that we can tell right now, re-uploads from Ice Cream Monkey Fan. One of them is a YouTube poop of Super Mario Bros., and regarding its purpose, I don't think I can do any better here than the user HugoC.M.7727 who commented the following. In essence, it's a parallel to the Mario creepypasta, which Ice Cream Monkey Fan laughed off. The chainmail put them in a situation that, like the Mario Brothers here, required finding someone before something horrific happened to them. It's a well-detailed breakdown, and I applaud the thought that went into it. There's a video on chainmail chasers called Tease, incorporating the smile dog voice and a tease about coming back, which really, I just interpret to be an update for subscribers and activity would resume soon. This was on May 6th, and sure enough, a new video arrived called Sightings on May 25th. Strangely, it's another Ice Cream Monkey fan re-upload, this time about De Grossman, a mysterious creature from Germany that has sometimes been related to Slenderman during the big Slender series movement in the heyday of Marble Hornets. It's said in Monkey's video that some people on Paranormal Prickheads have been seeing him. A few photos are shown, none of them really convincing, until the last one, which contains video glitching. And that, for tonight, will catch us all up. Chainmail Chasers is a young project, but it's truly promising, and what it's accomplished already is awesome. Creepypasta is old stuff, very schlocky, very been there, done that, and it was more popular than it was good territory. I think we can all admit that by now. To do anything worth doing with the material takes innovation and the ability to navigate while keeping what was lovable about it, for all its silliness and flaws. Chainmail Chasers understands that entirely, presenting a fresh approach and promising a new spin on the entire phenomenon while keeping us in that atmosphere of being a young adult on a mid-grade laptop, just trying to entertain ourselves with some spooky media. I'm impressed at the digital magic tricks, I'm impressed at the invention with the approach, I'm impressed at the nostalgic touches that cover all the right bases. I'm on board, happily and enthusiastically. If you feel the same, subscribe to Chainmail Chasers now, so you can be there when the first episode of Season 2 is uploaded. There's also apparently a Discord server linked in the description of some videos and on the channel page itself in the top right corner, so you can theorize with others and catch any story that may be unfolding there. As to why I don't have any coverage on story that could be occurring in the Discord, it's quite simple. If I just walked right in and poked around for a while, I'd blow my whole cover and basically admit on the spot I was making this video, wouldn't I? And like Smile Dog, I like my surprises. That's all for tonight, friends. A shout out to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, all of you for watching, and for my supporters on Patreon, who helped me keep the Nightmind Index online, which is where I first became aware of Chainmail Chasers. You can join Patreon for as little as just $2 a month, which goes a lot further than you know. And of course, you can join me for live Nightmind videos and games that go with the theme of the channel over on Twitch, where I've been pretty active lately. I'd love to see you there, and the link is in the video description. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and like the nostalgic internet horrors you just can't let die with your high school laptop, I'll be seeing you again real soon. Try not to save any haunted images in your journeys online, and until next time, sleep tight.